Welcome to part two of my birdwing video. Uh, this is the one where I actually get onto the stills I've taken of the collection I've recently acquired. Thank you for your patience that the first video ran so long that I had to put this bit into a second section. They're all in great condition because they're all brand new and come from conservation breeders who release a considerable portion of their stock into the wild to help local wild populations. These specimens, of course, have none of the remarkable history of those at the Manchester Museum, and these are the most relatively affordable species. These vary from 10 to 17 centimetres in wingspan. Get out a ruler and see for yourself how remarkable these are. I have shot a straight shot of each specimen, and then usually two or three further macro abstracts of each. You will notice how the wing form of the males is very consistent across the two species of Ornithoptera priamus, that being the Cape York or green and the Priam's blue birdwing, and is similar to in Wallace's golden birdwing and the Obi Island birdwing. However, the male form is very different in the Rothschild, Queen Victoria's, Goliath, and particularly the southern tailed birdwing. There's lots of variation here. Note also there's a huge size variation between these four, with the Goliath having a 15 centimetre wingspan and the southern tailed birdwing having a 10 centimetre wingspan. The former really does live up to its name and it is, or certainly the females of it, are the second largest species on earth. So there's a lot of variation in the males. In contrast, the underside, certainly of the females, is relatively similar in all species except Wallace's golden birdwing, whose females are much lighter coloured. The bright coloration of the abdomen, especially in the males, indicates the extreme unpalatability that the larva's consumption of Aristolochia pipevine provides to the larva and to the adult alike. And now on with the images. There are eight Ornithoptera species here, and then finally one Troides species. First we have the Cape York Birdwing, Ornithoptera priamus, and then a close relative Priam's Blue Birdwing, Ornithoptera priamus ovilianus. Priamus has a range of different forms, um, with, with several different greens and different blues found in the males of different subspecies. Uh, you can find it in a number of well, three major sites on the coast of Queensland in Australia and all the islands north and east of there, as far to the east as the central Solomon Islands. So it's a fairly widespread species. Uh, the Australian form is green. Alfred Russell Wallace discovered Ornithoptera croesus in 1859. He wrote in his book of 1869, quote, the beauty and brilliancy of this insect is indescribable, and none but a naturalist can understand the intense excitement I experienced when I at length captured it. On taking it out of my net and opening the glorious wings, my heart began to beat violently. The blood rushed to my head, and I felt much more like fainting than I have done when in apprehension of immediate death. I had a headache the rest of the day, so great was the excitement produced by what will appear to most people a very inade inadequate cause. It's wonderful to think of one of these absolute legends of the Victorian era of naturalism finding this animal for the first time or describing it for the first time and being absolutely bewitched by its beauty. The Obi Island birdwing is a rare species found only on Obi Island in Indonesia. It used to be very rare indeed but has recovered in recent decades but it remains vulnerable according to the IUCN. It has been commercially bred for the last 20 years or so. Endemic to the Arfak Mountains in Western New Guinea, Rothschild's birdwing is only found between 2,000 and 2,700 metres of altitude and was discovered and described by Pratt and Kenrick in 1911. It is named after Walter Rothschild, who funded the expeditions of Pratt and his two sons to both British and Dutch New Guinea at the start of the 20th century. Confined to the large island of Bougainville in eastern Papua New Guinea, as well as to the central and western parts of the Solomon Islands, Queen Victoria's birdwing was obviously named after the ruling monarch of the mid and late 19th century, discovered by George Robert Gray. 
Ornithoptera meridionalis, the southern tailed birdwing, is the smallest of the birdwings. Having said that, even males of this species are comfortably bigger than any European butterfly. The very small hind wings of both this species and the other tailed birdwing species, Ornithoptera paradisia, mean that the males are quite weak flyers, whereas the large, more conventional looking female seems to have no problems in flight. These species are bred in New Guinea um, and are relatively valuable um, and it is a truly beautiful animal, a really remarkable, a dainty male and a big, spectacular female. This may be my favourite of the lot. Um, it's a male Ornithoptera goliath, the goliath birdwing, so-called because of its size. Um, females of this get as large as Queen, Queen Alexandra's, give or take a centimetre. Um, I do actually have a female of this, but it looks just like the same as all the other um, Ornithoptera females, so I haven't photographed it yet, because they do, as I said earlier, all basically look the same. But this male is spectacular. He's got a 15 centimetre wingspan and these incredible green, black and gold patterns. A truly beautiful animal. Um, there are some wonderful videos of these online from New Britain and places like that, um, flying in the wild. And the males chase females quite powerfully and during mating will risk being their wings being scratched by the sharp claws on the feet of the females. But what an animal. Um, this has been bred for com commercially for 40 years now um, and is just a just a spectacular piece of piece of nature, really. Although I've concentrated on Ornithoptera so far, they only make up about a third of the different birdwing species. The largest genus is Troides, which contains 21 species. Um, one of the most spectacular of these is this, Ripon's birdwing. It's a beautiful species found in Sulawesi and the Moluccas Islands. And as you can see, is a case where the degree of sexual dimorphism, the, in other words, the difference between the males and the females, is much less marked than in the Ornithoptera. Here, the only real difference between male and female, certainly externally, some differences in the patterning and about a 5% different in body, difference in body size. The other, the third genus of the birdwing butterflies is Trogonoptera, which contains a couple of species, the most famous and spectacular being Roger Brooks birdwing. That brings to an end my second birdwings video. Hopefully you've enjoyed the images and the, the little nuggets of information I've been able to, to provide. Um, really enjoyed putting this together and it's just a pleasure to share these wonderful, I mean this really staggeringly beautiful insects. They really are amazing. Debrera was right, they are the most spectacular insects on earth. Amazing, amazing things. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, there's lots more videos on this channel and I'll have something up again in the next couple of weeks.